I usually regulate them, she regulated me and I was able to co-regulate. And it was such a beautiful, powerful moment to see like, wow, my five-year-old just did that for me. Like, what a gift. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Ecstatic Woman Podcast. I am your host, Alara Sage, the Ecstatic Life Mentor. Fellow ecstatics, you know, one of the things I notice is sometimes we love to make life complex. We love complex solutions to our problems, to our issues, to life. Oftentimes, the most profound solutions are things that are right here, available in the now, in the moment, are incredibly simple to access and to utilize. We're going to talk about this today and bring you one of my most favorite tools of all time, our breath. And our host here today, Ali Levine, is a certified breathwork practitioner and an intuitive stylist. I'm like super intrigued about that. <laughs> what is that? That sounds delightful. <laughs> I totally want you on my team for that. And she's also a transformation expert. So she really helps her clients move from breakdown into break through and guides them to embody more of their soul here into this life. So let's welcome Ali with our hearts. Thank you, Ali, for being here today. Thank you, Alara. Wow, what a beautiful intro. I literally have goosebumps. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. And yes, of course, uh, on your team for the intuitive styling. And I just love what you're doing. I love what you're building. I love what you're creating. You can feel your ecstatic energy. And I think that especially now with where we are in this paradigm shift, so many are starting to feel that fire, that ecstatic. And then it's like you said, it's like, what do we do with it? And sometimes, right, we can get really caught up because we do get so excited, myself as well, and ecstatic. And we do need to ground and anchor in and find even more presence in order to find that stillness and then that embodiment. And so, yes, the breath is just so yummy and magical because of it. Mm, yes. So interesting because I was talking about stillness today. And one of the cool things about breath is it's like movement that exists within the stillness, right? Yes, yes. It's so wonderful. And so I want to like pick your brain and, and hear about all your Let's deliciousness. <laughs> and so, Ali, like, tell me, what was breathwork to you? Like, where were you when you found the incredible tool of breathwork? Yeah, Ooh, where was I? I was in a very dark place, to be honest. Um, five and a half years ago, I became a mother. The One of the most beautiful blessings of my life. I'm now a mother of three, but it was my first daughter. And I went through a pretty traumatic birth in the medical system that led to a pretty heavy C-section. And 42 hours later, um, I pretty much felt like I was in postpartum depression right away, even though I didn't really know that's what I was in. I was in a very dark, disconnected state in my body. And um, a little backstory, I had wanted a natural birth. I had started at a birth center and I was not present. <laughs> I was not grounded and I was definitely not using the breath. And all those things, including pressures from the outside and all the things that I just allowed myself to consume, right? Because I at that time was a victim and I just took everything in, it led to that birth. And when all that happened, and then I went through pretty heavy postpartum depression for the first year almost of motherhood, I had to really surrender to presence and stillness as you spoke to and sit in my darkness as we all of course have it. And I didn't want to sit in it. I didn't want to see it. And so much came up for me from that traumatic birth the postpartum depression, grief I hadn't dealt with, so much I hadn't healed in my own life for so many years. And it all came up in that moment. And it was like, whoa, there's so much to unearth. There's so much to deal with. And I honestly was quite a shell of a human. It was quite dark at that time. Yeah, it was um, even talking about it, you know, you like, you feel it, right? Like I've released it and I'm very much in a healed space. I never say I'm fully healed, right? Because we're all evolving and growing, but I'm healed in that space. And just feeling into that, of speaking to that, you know, remembering those dark moments, remembering that I turned to my husband and said, 
I feel like I'm mourning the death of myself. And he looked at me and he was like, what did you just say? And to me, I felt like I finally had some kind of release. There was suddenly like a medicine that I was saying like, oh my gosh, I just mourned the old alley and I'm recognizing it. But in that moment, my husband was like, whoa, you really are in such a dark place. And I think for him, it was the moment where he realized where I was, even though I had really been there since the moment I really had had, you know, our daughter. And it was quite wild or because I was in such a beautiful space of I love my baby and I was so grateful that I was so enamored with her and I loved her so much that I showed up for her but I couldn't handle myself I would look in the mirror and I would shame myself I would shame my body my c-section scar I'd shame my birth I'd you know just shame me why couldn't I move forward why was I stuck in bed you know why couldn't I get back to work like all of these stories I just kept telling myself and I started honestly embodying them, right? Our cells are always listening as I've learned on this journey and the body is always receiving. And I just kept feeding the body terrible, terrible thoughts, terrible feelings that it all became part of me. I started, you know, being the postpartum depression and the anxiety. I started, you know, being the woman that was lost and in the dark and and thinking that that was me instead of recognizing that those were things I had to move through and heal. And so, In that journey, I found a lot of different people and healers along the way um, that I, you know, was so grateful for because I chose not to get on, um, you know, big pharma's medical system. Um, I was offered all kinds of stuff and um, thank God my soul was like, no, 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 no. And I think that was my first real listen to myself in a long time was like, there was a reason my body was saying no, even though my mind and my ego was like, yes give it to me. Let me get back to normal and get going again. Let me, let me get back, please. But my soul was like, no, no. My body was literally rejecting as I was sitting there across from the doctor. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to take it. And I remember he looked at me and he said, good luck. And I said, okay. And I started bawling. I know, right? I started bawling. And I said, this is the only way. And he said, this is the fastest, the quickest, and the easiest way. There, of course, are other ways, but you are in really bad shape, which I was. And this is what I recommend. And within six to eight weeks, you should be feeling at least half better than you are now. And I still in that moment sat there and was like, wow. (sighs) Okay. But my soul kept telling me, no. No, no, no. And our body's always speaking, right? It is the divine messenger, the divine channel. And my body was like, no. And so began that journey of healing and finding holistic help, finding spiritual help, wellness, all of it. And that's really where the journey began for me. And I started reaching out to thank God I had um, the midwife from the birth who gave me a postpartum specialist who led me to, you know, different types of holistic healers. I did NLP therapy. I did cognitive therapy. Um, that led me to meditation. Meditation is for me, I felt really brought me back to God, source, the universe, my divine connection. And then breath work and everything else then came in to deepen it. It was meditation that truly, I believe, saved me and brought me back to my soul. And then God and source, the universe actually showed up and showed me that I was a part of saving myself. And I moved from that victim to then started becoming the victor of my life and taking back my sovereignty and freedom. And then in 2020, after I finally had felt like I had moved through quite a bit and was doing pretty well, I was pregnant with my second daughter and we know what happened in 2020. And the trauma came all back up again. And I was feeling so powerless. And the I was living in California at the time. So I was in complete fear. I live now in Tennessee, but at that time I was in California. And I think that's important to mention because of course we all experienced it, but there were certain places that really put the fear on fire, if you will. And California was one of them. And I was really struggling being pregnant. I had everyone around me telling me, you know, my husband's not going to be there for my birth. I'm not going to be able to have a VBAC, which is a vaginal birth after a C-section, which is what I had been praying and having the intention for. You know, I'm, I might get you know this, I might get that, all these things, right? And that is where breathwork really showed up profoundly in that moment of like, 
I'm going to start doing this modality because meditation is no longer working. I'm getting stuck in the mind and then I hear all these other people's thoughts and I can't get out. And you're right, when you speak to that stillness, but this throughness, that's what breath work is because I was being still, but I was getting stuck in those meditative states, in those cognitive states. And I needed to move out of the mind and move into the body and into the wisdom. And that is where breath work really profoundly showed up. And I went, like you said, from breakdowns to breakthroughs in my own experience. I had my V back in 2020, which I would have never, ever thought could have happened. It was such a blessing. My husband literally said to me the moment after I had her, I feel like I'm watching you experience postpartum euphoria, he called it. He made it up. (laughs) And he said, I'm looking at you and you are glowing, you're beaming, and we're in such a crazy time. And meanwhile, not even kidding you, Alara, I mean, there were protests going on while I was birthing her. There was buildings burning down across the street. Like, I'm just trying to paint a picture here. I mean, it was chaos. And everything outside was saying, you know, this is not going to be what you think it's going to be. Even though you've done the work all through the pregnancy and you think breath work is going to show up, it's not going to work. And it was so intense that when at the end I did start getting tense and freezing up because there was so much out going on in the external between, you know, masks and all the things trying to be put on me and things blowing up literally in front of the building and there was a lot happening and I say that because I want people to understand the chaos that I was in outside but the inside of me was peaceful and I really knew I had that and I looked at my husband and I anchored in and I said I need to put my earbuds in my ears can you please give them to me and I turned on one of my fear releasing playlists and meditation and breath work and I started breathing deeply and anchoring in and reciting affirmations And my doctor said, okay, she's still a little stuck, but I'm going to let you do what you're doing. Thank God. And he said, I'll let you get into your space and then we're going to try again. And I just remember starting to pray deeply and just starting to really embody myself, birthing her and all of it. And I don't even know how to explain it. And you know what's beautiful? Your background reminds me of what I saw. Not even kidding and just saying this because I'm on with you. This pink, purple, (laughs) iridescent, like beautiful. I just started seeing above me, in front of me, through me. I could still to this day cannot explain it to you. It was an out-of-body experience. And next thing I knew, I was back on the chair table and I was crying and she was on my chest. And I couldn't even believe that she had come through. And even the doctor and the nurses were like, you did it. Like It was like everybody was in shock. And there she was. And it was like, holy shit, I did it. Like, And... When I say like the colors, I mean, because that's what came through when I was doing the breathing and when I was, you know, in that meditative state and I was just anchoring in and praying and breathing and trusting that somehow, some way, even in this chaos, even in this true stuckness, the physical stuckness in my body, she was going to come through. I was going to release her. This was going to happen. And it did. And so that moment then was the solidifying moment of you are no longer just doing the wardrobe styling you've been doing your whole 15 plus career of fashion you are now figuring out how to get certified in this work learning the work embodying it and then taking it to as many people who will truly receive it to help them go through a true soul transformation wow i'm obviously speechless um and if that story didn't you know inspire people to really pursue breath work and understand its power i honestly don't know what would i want to commend you for your bravery and for your listening to your soul you know listening to your wisdom of your body thank you for doing that thank you thank you for listening because when we all listen we all bring that power into the collective don't we it's so powerful when we choose to say okay a whole doctor (laughs) i'm gonna choose my body and choose what my body says even though they have all the expertise. They have all the science. They, did, yeah. did, 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 you know. They can see her. She's stuck. This is where it is. This is what's happening, right? And, and I also have to say I honor that doctor because he allowed me to honor my process in that moment because I advocated mm. for myself. And I said, mm. I need a minute and I need to do this, right? And then fast forward 2022, I had my son and my first home birth. 
and breathwork showed up even more and he got mm -hmm. stuck at the end and I had shoulder dystocia with him and the breathwork brought him through. And that is why my son oh, is named Abel because it means breath or spiritual healer. Yeah, and when I was speaking about the doctor, I meant the one who told you, like, if you don't take this, you're oh, like, this oh, is your her. only. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. yeah, because in that moment of listening to your body, like, no, I'm not going to take that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the easy way. That's the quick way. That's the quick fix. You know, that's the, the, the scientifically proven way, all the things. And then you don't know, is this, are these other ways going to work? We don't know. They're, they're not proven. You know, all these things that we have to, like, battle with between our own wisdom and you know what is accepted in our physical reality so yeah i really honor you for doing that and what a tremendous experience with regards to yeah i mean i had two natural births as well but mine were fairly smooth sailing oh good for you, you. Know, <laughs> to bring breath work into challenging births really stands you know it emphasizes its its power and really brings forth you know its power because even with my second born you know i was it was in the water and everything it's still like when your body is in so much pain and discomfort you know i wasn't aware of breath work per se but i was aware of my breath this was several years ago and i was breathing and i was using my breath and i was moving and i was working with myself and it's you know it's it's challenging when you're in that much pain, you want to tense up and kind of pull out, right? And that's what was coming in when you were talking about those dark spaces, because we all definitely go through those dark spaces. And when we're triggered and we're just kind of like, oh my God, there's so much tension in our bodies, tension in our emotions and our mind. We want to pull up and out and breath work pulls us back in, doesn't it? Which can be really uncomfortable initially, but this is where our power is in our body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And gets yes. us out of the mind, right? And lets us get in and regulate so we can also recognize like, oh, I have to feel it. I sure do. But then yes. I get to shift it and heal it. I don't have to stay stuck here, right? I don't have to actually yes. become the, you know, this is what I have. It's no, this is what I'm experiencing, but then I can release it. And I feel like this is where we get stuck even in the medical system is like, they tell you, you have this diagnosis, you have this, you have that, and then you embody that and you become that. I know yes. that was me. Right. And then when you actually realize, like you said, actually going through it and getting in and allowing ourselves to feel it, but then not becoming it and releasing it. Sure, it might be uncomfortable to be in it, but the only way in, the only way, you know, out is through, right? So we have to get in. Mm. Yes. And I speak to also with the embodiment of what we're diagnosed with. You know, I was diagnosed with chronic Lyme's and I was researching it and doing all this. Again, this was many years ago. And all of a sudden, you know, my symptoms were exaggerating and they were lining up with the moon because that's what you read. And all of a sudden, my higher self was like, stop. Stop. You're feeding the story. And I was like, Wait. oh. You're feeding and it was the like, story. no more. You're not yeah. talking about this. And you can say you've had it. You can say you're healing it, but you're not like, oh, the moon is this. And so my spiral keats are activated. And it was just like, no more. And I got a hard slap. And from that day forth, it was like, okay, I'm not going to feed this story anymore because I was just spiraling myself yeah. further into it. You know? Yeah, you, you just said it. You feed it. And that's what we latch on to, right? And we're such great storytellers, myself as well. And we get stuck in it until we realize, oh, they're just stories. They're not actually us. They're not authentically us, which is why I say, come home to yourself through the breath. When you regulate, you start to recognize, oh, this is who I am as an authentic soul. All the rest of that is just noise and stories. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So tell us a little bit about kind of the the mechanisms of breath. Why is breath so powerful for ourselves? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, just, you know, how we were speaking about the flowing and the stillness. I mean, first off, when you look at a baby, since we're speaking to birth so much and mothers, a baby comes in breathing from the stomach to the chest in a parasympathetic nervous system. What is a parasympathetic nervous system? It means you're in true homeostasis. You're flowing and breathing the way you are designed to. Most of us take shallow breaths all the time. We're not getting that divine oxygen flow. We're not flowing. We're not fluid. So things get stagnant. Emotions get stuck. Trauma gets stuck. All of it becomes stuck in the body. And if we understand that we are energetic beings, which I know your community does, then 
we understand that emotions are energy in motion and they must move. They cannot become stagnant because they will manifest. They will create. We've seen this over and over again. And so this is why it's so powerful to regulate and use different exercises to allow that flow and more oxygen into the body. And then, of course, when we really deepen in and continue to breathe, this is where the magic happens and we get to start to accelerate into the higher states of consciousness. We get the divine downloads. We start to really hear our higher selves, see our higher selves and realize, oh, wait, they really are in me and within me. I just have to actually allow myself to step into that. It's already right here, right? My future, my reality is there. I just have to actually walk into it and we can do that with breath work. But even just on such a basic level, it releases anxiety. It releases depression. It helps us sleep. It builds our immune system. It helps our gut health. I mean, there's so much goodness in the breath and it's literally within us. Like we were designed this way. Like this is not, you know, just some random thing you're going out and buying. No, this is within you. You are designed divinely with the breath. That's one thing I love about the breath. It's not like go buy it. It's not something you have to purchase or pay for or subscribe to. It's literally there. And, you know, it's here for until it's not and we are no longer, right? Like it's, yeah. it doesn't go anywhere that entire time. Right, <laughs> Which exactly. Is so powerful. It's so powerful. <laughs> it's like understanding that we were made this way for a reason. Like we all just breathe shallow because we're just surviving, right? But we want to thrive in our lives. So when you can take those deep conscious breaths and anchor in, which is breath work, it's deep conscious breathing, well, everything changes. Your life, I mean, breathwork has changed my life. It's obvious why I'm talking about it today. I mean, I tell everyone, I'm like, there have been so many things that have happened in my life that I can speak to, but this is one that I'll never, ever get done talking about because every single day it shows me again how much more it's shifting me, how much more I observe my life, how much more gratitude I have, how much more presence, abundance. I teach it to my children. Like, it never ends. It always shows up for me over and over again. Mm, I feel like it's such a gift that you bring to the world, Ali. And, you know, when we think of breath work, like, let's be real, the word work is attached yeah. to it. And I know a lot of people have like resistance to that, yeah. right? And yeah. you can see these really powerful, you know, sessions and whatnot. People are like really having these real powerful experiences in their body, which, yes, there there is that. And... I know that you and I kind of talked about breath work is just conscious breathing as well. So can you talk a little bit about the difference between more of the potent and powerful sessions of breath work and more of the day-to-day -day utilization of breath? Yes. So first off, the day-to-day, -day, of course, is just like moving through, right? Like something happens in a situation and you just need to release the anxiety. You just need to release the stress. So just allowing yourself to do the basic breath work is going to let you move it out and not get stuck. But then the deeper sessions, right? The deeper work, when we speak to the trauma, the emotions, all of that, when we deeply breathe and anchor in and we are guided and held in a safe space, which is what I do with clients all day long, of course, is you open up this space for them to, like I said, come home to themselves through the breath. You use different exercises to guide them, to move them through what they're experiencing. And whether you are conscious of it or not, the body is holding. So what I always say, the nervous system doesn't lie. So whatever is coming up is meant to be seen and released. And you do that by allowing yourself to just breathe. It's like I tell my clients, when they start to feel that tightness, that anxiety, I'm like, just breathe through it. I'm here, you're safe, let's keep breathing. As long as you are not experiencing, I don't wanna ever re-traumatize someone because I am trauma-informed. So I do pay attention to those things. But as long as they're safe and they're breathing and they're okay, we're gonna continue because like you said, it may not be comfortable, but as soon as it comes up, it's released. And there's actual studies that show like, People that have gone to therapy for 10 years talking about a trauma release it more in one to two breathwork sessions than they do in 10 years. And why is that? Because you and I were talking about the stories. You keep talking about the same thing. This is what I have. This is what it is. And we keep reaffirming it and reaffirming it and reaffirming it. No, we're not going to talk about what you have. You don't have that. It's just something that's going on with you right now. Release it. And when you deepen in the breath, you move it out. The trauma leaves the body. Think about your nervous system as almost like this computer that stores everything, all the junk, all the files, everything, good, bad, and different. And your computer gets junked up, right? It's like when we started this podcast, you're like, make sure you close your tabs so we have memory. <laughs> but it's true. 
you need to release from the body in order to continue to up level, to allow your cells to receive even deeper, more codes, more wisdom to anchor in. So we must release and move through. And breath work does this for us. And you're right, the breath, the name breath work, there is such like a, people get, oh, I don't want to do that. And I also think it's because many times people feel it has to be such an extreme experience. They feel it has to be so intense. And this is where I really want to break personally the stigma. You do not have to have it be extreme for it to be profound. Actually, it could be really soft and beautiful and be even more fulfilling and more soul changing than you rushing yourself through an experience and feeling like you must release all this trauma all at once. Because guess what? Just because you released it doesn't mean like you're just all of a sudden healed. No, now at least it's out of the body, but now you still have to do it and the mind's gonna catch up. The mind's gonna recognize you released it. So now we have to actually go through the steps to help you further heal it and allow it. And I feel like what I see so much a lot happens is clients that come to me sadly have been traumatized and re-traumatized by breath work. And that's why they're so resistant and scared because they went in and they had this amazing massive experience of crying and screaming and breakthroughs. And, and don't get me wrong, that's amazing. But so many people don't realize like you are holding years and years or maybe eons and eons of trauma from ancestors, from everything going on. And now you're like, why am I bawling my eyes out? Why can't I get out of bed for five days, 10 days, whatever it is? Well, yeah, because you just released it all and you didn't even allow yourself to recognize you released it and didn't even work on the healing with it. And so this is why I say, you know, it really is a true, beautiful, sacred process. We're not meant to rush this. Just like the breath is such a beautiful flow through us. You're meant to breathe deeply and consciously. You're not meant to rush this experience. Yeah, sure, can we use different breathwork exercises to energize ourselves, to move more out as we need to? And I do in the right moments. But do I make every single experience so overwhelming and almost overstimulating to the nervous system? No, because we're all in fight or flight for the most part and freeze in our lives. So I'm not doing you any favors if I'm moving you back into that in a different way. I want you to be regulated. I want you to have flow so that you can receive as you need to in divine timing and actually move through and actually heal. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. Yeah. I've had a breathwork session, you know, where I was laying down and breathing very strongly and did the whole screaming thing. And it was so powerful, but I've really found the more day to day and the, the actual, the deep, soft breathing, you know, just deep conscious breathing regularly when I really need it in that moment is so much more transformational than going and having, you know, this, this intense session because it becomes more accessible to us, doesn't it? Like the more we do it in all of those moments, the more of that tool really gets anchored into like, oh yeah, I have this tool. It's called my breath. <laughs> and and oh, yeah. speaking to you saying like with those sessions, those intense sessions, I feel like too, we then we make up so many expectations. Like, oh, why didn't I start hysterical? Like I know for me when I first started before I got certified, it was like the next high, the next chase. Why am I not bawling my eyes out this time? Oh, why am I not feeling like all this anxiety release? And then you set yourself up for expectations and then you've already failed in what you're doing because you created something that wasn't even there instead of just allowing the body to show up and be the wisdom that it is for you and to allow you to move it through and like you said so beautifully the basics of just the conscious breathing and being able to see that like oh just a few conscious breaths lets me come back to presence it lets me be a thriving mother because I'm no longer reacting and triggered I can actually see you and receive you as a soul even if it makes me crazy <laughs> and I can actually you know understand what you're going through and we can move through it and we can understand it right and so that's why it's so powerful to have the basics and then you build on that too right you start to say oh this feels good at 10 minutes let me try to do it for 20 minutes a day now see how I feel and keep moving through those different breakdowns and breakthroughs and find what flows for you and what works, which is why, as you know, I created my app because I wanted it to be accessible and easy for everyone to understand how we use these simple practices and they don't have to be so dramatic and so, you know, mind blowing every time. And I'm sure you've seen, obviously, in all of your work over the years, the more we do practice and practice and create this in our lives, the more profound it actually is. And we actually receive so much more than just the one one hit wonder. Right?
Yes, absolutely. And then again, that self empowerment, right? Like the more we do it for ourselves, that app idea is wonderful because yes, and you're empowering the individual, like use this whenever you can. And they start to engage in it more frequently, more regularly. Now it becomes, you know, their own, right? Their own practice. And it becomes this communication with their body versus I'm going to go to this person and have this session. And, and they were somehow the channel of my power, right? Like, no, it's all here with our own body and creating that relationship. Absolutely. So if, do you have like one tip or one, one specific thing that you really help people if they're like, okay, I'm new to breath work or I, I, you know, I feel like a lot of people experience a lot of anxiety and stress. So what is that one kind of tip or tool that you can give to people? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think especially now we're seeing a lot of people experiencing a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. And I think like you said, you know, like understanding like that you are, you know, the divine tool within your breath and you get to work with it of how it feels good to you. So I always tell everyone first off, you have full body autonomy. So even if you do use my app, you go with what feels good to you and you move through and I'm there to guide you and facilitate and hold safe space. Okay. I think that's really important to mention that we all know our bodies best and we listen to that beautiful wisdom. And as far as like a tool that I would say, I always love to add in affirmations when I'm breathing. So even if it's just, you know, I'm breathing in love through my nose and I'm breathing out limiting beliefs. I'm breathing in my I am presence and I'm breathing out anything that no longer serves. I'm breathing in wisdom and I'm breathing out anything that's blocking me, right? And you start saying these things to yourself. I mean, even with my kiddos and I have them breathe, you know, they love to say they breathe in peace and happiness into their belly when they breathe and they breathe out what's stuck in them, you know? And it's like just simple things like that and you go with what resonates for you and what feels good because that's what your body is really gonna receive, right? And our cells are always listening. But just something as simple as that and allowing yourself to do that like three or four times just in the nose and out the mouth like no, you'd be surprised how quickly you're going to shift. I love that so much because I am a big opponent. Uh, I just lost my word. <laughs> I'm a big believer in using our voice. You know, our yeah. voice is so powerful to us. So when you're speaking out loud like that, you are really activating yourself in those energies. So that is a beautiful, wow. beautiful tip. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think what you just said too, right? Our voice, our voice, I learned your voice can be harmful or it can be very helpful, right? And so like when I was going through my journey, like you said, same with you. And it was like, oh, I have this, I have that. It's like, no, you speak life. You speak sovereignty. You speak the beauty of you, the authenticity of you, all that you are, even if you can't fully see it in that moment you speak it as it is because that is how you call in more and the body receives it and it knows what to do even if your mind doesn't mm. Mm, mm, mm. yes 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 beautiful and so ali how can people find you and connect with you obviously yeah. your app tell us about your app and other social media that they can connect Yes. Well, thank you. This conversation clearly lit me up. <laughs> I love what you're all about. And I'm just so honored to be here with your listeners. So my app is called Breathe and Be, B-R-E-A-T-H-E, -E, just like it sounds. And you can either search it A-N-D and just the letter B capital or the ampersand sign and then the letter B because it's all about being in your being. It's free to download on the App Store and Google Play because I wanted everyone to be able to just get on there and just start breathing even if they have no idea what they're doing. So there's a few free breathwork exercises right when you download it and sign up. And then I highly recommend if this calls you to subscribe for all access. I have all my intentions on there, affirmations, all different types of breathwork exercises to serve you from two minutes all the way to an hour, depending on whatever you need. I drip in new content every month, sometimes even more than that, because I get excited and go in there and drop in a lot more to serve my community. And I have stuff for moms and kiddos as well. And I've been building out an entire um, mother and kid parent program to help you breathe with your children, because that's changed my kids' lives and um, our relationship. And yeah, you can find me at social at Allie Levine Design is my um, social media. Breathe and Be Allie Levine is also the app's 
uh, Instagram, and um, AllieLevine.com is my website. Mm, I love how you're bringing in the breathing for the children as well. Yeah, it's such, not only is it so important for our children to learn, but it's really fun to do it with them it's so and fun. engage with them. Yeah, yeah, and be like in that connected state and then kind of watch them use it when you're not like, you know, asking them to do it or kind of egging them on to do it. And they just kind of use it on their own. And you're like, yay! Yeah. Um, I, tell you, I love that you said that because I've seen that so many times. And can I just be really like human for a moment? Like I was absolutely having, I was having a human moment a few weeks ago and I was like throwing a total tantrum, was not using my breath, was not anchored in. I was very triggered. And my five-year-old looks at me and she goes, mama, breathe. And I couldn't, I was in such a space and she just started doing the breath work. And because she started, mama followed. And I was like, I was, I was crying and I was like, so amazed that she embodied it. And then she, I usually regulate them. She regulated me and I was able to co-regulate. And it was such a beautiful, powerful moment to see like, wow, my five-year-old just did that for me. Like what a gift. Wow. Yes, that is embodiment and truly what a gift. Yay. I'm celebrating. What is her name? Amelia. Amelia, I'm celebrating her. Yay for her and her beautiful, beautiful spirit and helping mommy <laughs> co-regulate and bringing in her breath and using her power. Yay, yay, yay. Yes, yes, right? yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I love it. Fantastic. Okay, so now we're going to move into our activation. I'm just going to clear my breath or my voice here. All right, my... My voice seems triggered. My throat seems triggered. I'm sure there'll be some goodness here for us today. Who knows what's going to come through. And I just always say, you know, if you're listening to this and you're driving, uh, you might come back to this at a different stage. And, you know, there's never anything that we have to experience in these kinds of moments. It's just about really being present and just being with you, being with what shows up for you here today. There's no right or wrong. Okay, so let's all just close our eyes and hey, let's start with the breath, right? Let's breathe in through our nose and out through the mouth. Just a comfortable breath for you and just noticing as you do this, that flow of air, right? The flow of air in through your nose and the flow of air out of your mouth, feeling, connecting to that energy, that sensation, that experience of flow. There it is, it's right there, just with our breath and really focusing on breathing now, a little bit deeper down into your bodies. As you inhale, allowing your belly just to come out ever so softly and subtly, exhaling out of your mouth. Inhaling, drawing your breath down into your womb, down into your pelvis. Exhaling, dropping that mouth open, ah, letting go, sighing. Ah, letting go and sighing and just releasing that tension from your body. Connecting all the way down into your womb, all the way down into your womb. Ah, all the way down into your feminine power that exists in your womb, my love. With each inhalation, you are connecting more down into your womb. Each inhalation, you're drawing yourself ah, deeper into that connection, deeper into that connection of your womb, that connection of the ma within you, whether you have children or not. 
Breathing down to that ma energy that exists in your womb. Breathing down into that femme power. Beautiful. Ah, and now just consciously exhaling and relaxing. Exhaling and letting go. So just still breathing down to the womb. And as you're exhaling, ah consciously letting go connecting down to that womb ah, releasing letting go you don't have to know what you're letting go of you can just breathe it out of your mouth you can just breathe it out of your body Ah, releasing it, letting it go, letting it go, letting it go. Yes, beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. And affirming to your womb, yes, 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 I'm here with you, my love. Yes, yes, yes. Affirming to your womb, affirming to your power. Affirming to the ma energy within you, the mother, the great mother, the no thing, the point of creation that exists within you. Yes, 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 yes. I am here with you. I am connecting with you here now. I am connecting with you here now you can place your hands over your womb if that feels good again this isn't about being a mother this is about the ma that exists within us all the point of creation the creative life force energy that we all carry we all are this ma energy we all are creator beings and you can connect into this power and yes, 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 affirm that this is you. Affirm this connection. Affirm yourself breathing down into this space, breathing down into your womb. Yes, yes, yes to your power. Yes, yes, yes to the creator being within you. Yes, yes, yes to your body, to your wisdom, to the intuition that you hold within you always, 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 always. So innately wise you are, my love. So innately wise you are my love breathing i'm just going to bring in some sound just keep focusing on your womb and keep breathing down to that womb and exhaling releasing releasing whatever feels like coming out of your mouth as i bring in this sound within each inhalation you are expanding 
expanding your space, expanding the vibrational energy and sphere of your womb. With each inhalation, you are gently expanding your power, expanding the sphere of your bodies. Each inhalation, expanding out, exhaling, releasing, letting go. <sighs> expanding, expanding your power. <sighs> Yes, yes, yes. The electromagnetic field of your womb, of the point of your creative life force, the point of creation itself expanding in your being as you are dropping down into more connection with this part of yourself, dropping down ah, into more connection of this part of yourself. This is you, my love. This ma energy is you, my love. This is you. This is your power. This is your femme power. This is your creator being. This is you, my love. Mm, yes, yes, yes. And just placing your left hand over your womb, your right hand over your heart as we just end this with gratitude, gratitude, gratitude for our wombs, gratitude for the femme within us, for this reproductive system. Even if you've had it removed energetically, there's such a signature there, owning you as a woman, owning that you came in as a woman with this reproductive, this ability to create from nothing, to create from energy, gratitude into this space, gratitude for all of this beautiful energy that we carry in our bodies, gratitude for this wisdom, gratitude for this intelligence. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 beautiful, and so it is, and so it is, and so it is. By the power of three, the perfection of the divine trinity, it is complete. Aho, yay, you may open your eyes, come back to this place. Ah, rub your bodies, shake it out. Ooh, ah. Yes, 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 yes. Ali, my love. Such Have a delight. Such a delight to have you here. Beautiful. Such a delight to connect with you. Me too. Hear your story. I am just honestly just awe inspired by that beautiful, beautiful story. Thank you so much for bringing your light here today. Thank you for letting me bring it and share it. And Thank you. I know there's more to come and I'm honored to be a part of your community. Yes, yes, yes. And audience, reach out to Ali and absolutely sign up for that app. You know, it's so powerful to have that at our fingertips, right? We're in this age of humanity where all that is at our fingertips. And so utilize that, right? Utilize having Ali in your pocket. I would want her in my pocket. I'm going to talk to her about this intuitive stylist stuff. That's just delicious. And check her out on social media. She's very active on social media and very much here for you. So reach out and connect to her. And as always, share this story, share this episode like oh my gosh what woman doesn't need to hear the power of her body right the power wisdom of our body so please share this episode make sure you rate and review and we will see you next time on the ecstatic woman podcast <laughs>